fact, it's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And I trust and I believe that you are doing well and your family too. Well, I'm also blessed by God's grace. Well, my name is Seven, the Child Evangelist. And I'm here once again for another interesting lesson to share with you. And I believe you're so excited to know what we have for today. But we'll do it in a few minutes. But before we begin, let me ask you this question. Do you know that if you're in your house with your family and nobody is talking to each other, it feels like there's something wrong? Don't you think so? Of course, it's like everybody hates each other. It's like the family is not connected in love and in relationship. Yeah, that's how it may seem and it may feel like. So if today you can talk with any member of your family, then it is true that your family is connected in love, in relationship, and also they are too close. Well, God, who is the creator of families, also enjoys to have a strong relationship with his children and the family as well. And the one of the things that he is so much interested and so much in love with is to hear his children talking to him. So today in our lesson, we are going to learn how every child can talk to God. So I hope you are ready to get your Bible, get your pen, and your notebook, and join me as we step into our lesson for today, how every child can talk to God. One of the things that God loves most, aside all the things that He has created for us, His children, is that He loves to hear the voice of His children. And every child can talk to God through prayer, because that is the only way we can communicate with Him. But first, let's learn a few things about what prayer is. Prayer is very important because it is a way of maintaining the right relationship with God. Another thing about prayer is that it helps us to face daily problems. That is why in the Bible, Jesus taught us how to pray when it comes to the basic prayer approach. That is the Lord's Prayer. The truth is every child can talk to God so you can maintain the right relationship with him and even confess your sins, any wrong thing that you have done, and God will hear you if you obey always. But maybe you are thinking and said, Where can we pray? And when can we pray? Well, the Bible tells us that God's people prayed at any place and at any time. Now, let me give you an example of those people who prayed in the Bible. First, Jonah prayed in the belly of a fish. Second, Lydia prayed at the river bank. And Paul, Paul and Silas prayed in the prison. So you see, this one tells us that we can pray at any time and anywhere. Okay, now let's just read what the Bible says about prayer. This time, we are going to the New Testament. As I said earlier, we have the Old and the New. So we are going to the New Testament. Open to the book of First Thessalonians, chapter number 5, verse number 17. It says, Pray at all times. I read again. It says, Pray at all times. Wow! This confirms what we just learned that we can pray at any time and anywhere. This simply means that we can pray at any time and at any place. And any moment. So that means you can pray in the morning, you can pray in the afternoon, you can pray in the evening, at any time and any moment. So what do you do when you are going to pray? First, you have to close your eyes so that you don't get distracted or you don't get disturbed by anybody or anything so that you can focus and concentrate and think about God. Now the second thing is that you have to bow down your head to show respect. The next thing that you have to do is that you have to fold your hands together either this way or this way so that at least you can be quiet before him then you begin to tell God what you want him to hear from you by addressing him by Father or my Lord Jesus or dear God any one of them is okay then finally you end your prayer in the name of Jesus so you see this is the, the very basic steps that you can follow to pray or to talk to God. The next part of this lesson is what do we tell God when we are praying? How can we talk to God in a way that we not just put words anyhow? So we are going to learn. Now, before we can be able to 
communicate or talk to God, we need certain reminders to help us to know exactly what we need to say when we are talking to God. And what we are going to use as our reminder is our hand or our fingers. So first, I'm going to use my left hand to demonstrate, okay? All right. The first thing that you need to do or the first thing that will remind you when you are going to pray with your hand stretched out like this, your palm should always remind you that before you start praying, you need to thank God. And if you are going to pray to thank God, what are some of the things that you can thank God for? I'm going to give you three things that you can be thankful for. The first thing that you have to thank God for your life. You can also thank God for your family. Okay? Then pray and thank God for the things that He has created for you that you are enjoying. So these three things can be your prayer point as you are praying to thank God. And remember, I said your palm should remind you of your first step of prayer. That is thank God for all the things that you have done. This will show that you are so much appreciative, you are so much sincere about all that He has done for you. So today, I have three friends from my Sunday school class that they are going to help me and they are going to help you to learn that it is very easy to talk to God. So first on the list is that we said we are going to be a praying to thank God. So I have George. He is going to help us and he is going to help you to learn how to pray and thank God with these three things that I made mention of. Thank you God for your life, thank you God for your family, and thank you God for all the things that He has provided for you to enjoy. Listen to Him. Thank you for giving life today. Father, I thank you for waking up our family, Father. Thank you for protecting and guiding our family. Father, I thank you for all the things that you have done for us. Did you see how easy it is to pray? Yes, it's easy and it's not difficult. And you can also try it. Now the next reminder, which you can always use to remind you after you have prayed for Thanksgiving, is to make a feast. And this one should remind you you have to pray for forgiveness of sin. You see, as children, there are a lot of things that we do up here when it comes to thinking. There are a lot of things that we say with our mouth, which is wrong. And there are a lot of things that we do when does God please God? And so each day and any time we are praying, we need to ask for forgiveness of sin. That the sin that we have done in the mind of thinking wrongly, and the thing that we have said which is wrong, and the thing that we have done which does not please God. And so when you are praying for forgiveness of sin, these are the three things that you pray to ask God to forgive you. You know that children will do a lot of things which are very bad, like stealing, like bullying, like stamping our feet when our parents calls us, or even insulting our friends. All these things are sin, and we need to pray to ask God to forgive us. So let's go back to the Sunday school class again and see how God prays to ask forgiveness of sin. <laughs> All right, so after you have prayed to ask God to forgive you your sins, now we are coming to your fingers. Now, the first finger we are going to use as a reminder as our next step to pray or to talk to God is your thumb. Okay, your thumb should remind you to pray for your family members or for your family in general. But you ask me, so what do I say? What do I tell God about my family? Well, I'm going to give you three things that you can talk to God about your family. First, pray and tell God to bless your family. The second is pray and ask God to protect your family. And then third thing is that pray and ask God to provide the needs of your family. These are the three things that you can talk to God about for the start, at least, so that at least you can be able to grow with it. I think this one is very simple. So let's go back into the Sunday school class and listen to Hans as he also prays for his family. Well, 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 gradually we are growing, gradually we are learning, and gradually. We are taking it step by step. 
First, we pray and thank God. Second, we pray for forgiveness of sin. And the next one is that we pray for our family members. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. So, when you are done praying for your family, the next thing that you have to pray for or to talk to God about, that brings us to our index finger. And this one should remind you to pray for your Sunday school teachers. But you also say, hey, sir, so what do I pray for my son? What do I tell God about my Sunday school? So I'm going to give you three things that you can talk to God about your Sunday school teachers. And this is what you can tell God. And this is what you can pray for. You can pray and ask God to give them wisdom so they can teach you His word. And you can also pray to ask God to protect them wherever they go. And also pray and ask God to provide their needs. So these are the three prayer points you can pray for your Sunday school teachers. And this one too, we'll go back to the Sunday school class and listen to George how he prays for his Sunday school teachers. Take a look. So they can teach us the way, but I also pray that so, so tell them and bless them. You see that it is not difficult. All right. So now we are going to the next finger, which is your tallest finger among all the fingers. Now your middle finger should remind you when you are praying to pray for all those who are in a high position. I mean those who are in, a, I mean those who are in authority. I mean the doctors, the lawyers, the judges, the president, our pastors. I mean all those big, big, big men. You can pray for them and ask God to give them wisdom so that they can take a godly decision for the country. You can also pray for God to protect them. So let's visit the Sunday school class and listen to one of the students in their class as he prays for the people in authority. Take a look. Well, you see, there you have it. You see, praying to God is not that difficult. It is very simple. The next reminder that you can always use is this ring finger. This finger should remind you to pray for all who are sick. It could be a sibling who is sick. It could be any relative. It could be a friend. So when you're praying for the sick, you're praying for all of them. But if you're praying for the sick, what do you say? All right, I'm going to give you this basic prayer point. You can pray and ask God to heal them. And you can also pray and ask God to give them strength so that they'll be strong again. And that one too, God will hear you. And this is the part that was so interesting in their class, where one of them, one of the children, whose name is Shida, told the teacher that said, help me to pray for sick people. Say it and I'll say it after you. That is exactly what happened in the class. So let's, let's go to the class and take a look. Father, I pray, I pray for all those who are sick. For all those who are sick. That you will heal them. That you heal them. And give them strength. Give them strength. So that they will be strong again. Alright! So you see, it is not difficult at all. If she that can pray alongside, then you can also pray alongside. Let mommy guide you. Let daddy guide you. And gradually, gradually, you will find your feet in terms of talking to God. It's not difficult. So don't get scared when you're talking to God, okay? Alright. Now, lastly, your little finger should remind you to pray for yourself after you have finished praying for the sin. And this is what you can tell God when you are praying. Pray that God will protect you wherever you find yourself, especially going to school, coming back from school, in the house, at the playground. Tell God about it. Ask Him, pray about it. Now, then you also, you can also pray to ask God to guide you with His Spirit everywhere you go. So He'll be guiding you in, in terms of everything that you will be doing. Not just doing anything, but He should guide you in terms of everything that you are doing. Then, you can also pray and ask God to provide your needs, including your family. So you see, 
It's very simple. And then finally, you can end this prayer in the name of Jesus. Then you add Amen to it. That's all. So let's finally go back to the Sunday school class and listen how I want to pray for himself, which you can also learn to pray for yourself. Take a look. All right, my love to God in Christ. Now it is your turn to talk to God about all that we have just shared. Remember, I said that your palm should remind you when you are praying, when you begin to pray, your palm should remind you to thank God. Then, after thanking God, you make a fist. The one you make a fist, the fist should remind you to pray, to ask God to forgive you the sins that you have done in your mind, you have said, and then you have done. Then after that, you release your farm. Your farm should remind you to pray for your family. Then, you release your index finger. This one too should remind you to pray for the Sunday school step. Don't forget that. Then, your middle finger should remind you to pray for all those who are in authority. I mean, the lawyers, the judges, all the big people in the high position. Don't forget that, including your pastor. Then the ring finger should remind you to pray for the sick. It could be that your mother, your father, your auntie, or your siblings, or whoever. He said, you might not know, but you are praying, go to him and touch them. Then lastly, you pray for yourself. And don't forget to pray for yourself. And I can assure you that God you hear every single word that you tell him. Okay, I will be coming your way once again with another interesting lesson. And I believe you will enjoy this lesson. And you keep on talking to God because now you know how you can talk to God in prayer. And as I said earlier, I said I have written a lot of Bible stories for you to read. So you can ask your mom or your daddy to make a purchase of it and you can read and I can assure you that you always grow in the Word of God. So till I come your way once again with another lesson, have a blessed life in Christ.